Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. During the prayer, our prayers this morning, there will, as always, be a time of silent prayer. During this silence, please feel free to light a candle in prayer if you wish. We begin our worship with our territorial acknowledgement. We gather for worship and work in Treaty 1 territory, which is also the homestead of the Métis nations. For thousands of years, Indigenous peoples have walked this land and knew it to be the center of their lives and their spirituality. Let us worship our call to worship. We step into this day listening for God's great story. We make ready for God's freedom. We step into new purposes for our church with the light of God before us. We make ready for God's ways. We step into new purposes of our lives as we sing, we pray, we laugh, and we share in each other's stories. We make ready for the hope that we find in our promises to live as one community of faith. Let us pray. Great God, we move into this time and space with great excitement and high spirits. We have come to renew our joy in loving you and sharing this love with each other. We bring our listening and our touch with our hearts and with our minds so that we too can live inside your stories. We welcome each other here. We welcome the new people and the old. Help us to remember who we are as your children as we celebrate the purpose you have given us as your people. And now we pray as Jesus has taught us to pray, saying, Our Mother and Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
And now it's time for our young and young at heart. In this message, it's based on Matthew 18. It's a model for conflict resolution. The children are going to learn and observe items that are fixed and learn that Jesus thinks it's important to fix or to resolve problems we might have with another person. So I'm going to invite you now to watch the video and enjoy. It's really quite good. Hi there, it's Kristen with Ministry to Children. I'm so glad that you could join me today because I want to talk about something that is very important and very special. We're going to talk about friendships and relationships and how those things are very important to the life of a church because God wants us to live in harmony with one another and in order to build the church and to have the church be something that can help other people, well, we have to have solid relationships. Sometimes those things can have difficulties or problems and we need to be able to resolve them. And I was just getting ready to make some crafts for this as well, in fact. I was getting ready to staple these papers together. You know, relationships work sort of like these staples because they hold things together and keep them from coming apart. Things like our lives, things like the church, and, sorry, the stapler seems to be having some issues that happen sometimes. Okay, well, hang on, I'm having a problem with my stapler, let's see. Maybe if I give it a good hard whack, that sometimes works, what do you think? Should I just smack it? Because it's not working. Let's see. I will look inside of the stapler. Maybe it needs more staples. I do have some extra staples. Hmm. Let's see. Okay. That might be the trick. Still not stapling. Okay, I apologize for this because I I know we're not talking about staplers right now, but I need to get this together. I can't get it together if my stapler won't work. Hang on. I'm calling the big guns. See, fortunately, my mom taught elementary school for about 30 years, so she's dealt with a stapler or two. Just a second. Mom, yes, I am doing super. Yes, yes, the cat's doing great too. Mm -hmm. Okay, listen, I, I kind of am in a hurry, but I have an important question. So, I'm having difficulty with my stapler. See, it seems like it's jammed or something. Somehow, I can't get it to staple. It has staples in it. Yes, yes, I used the right kind of staples. It has staples in it, but it's not stapling anything together. Hang on, let me take a screenshot for you. Okay, you see? Okay, I'll open it up. Yeah. I'll show you again. Do what now? I mean, it's not, it's like totally jammed. Okay, I'll open it up. Take the staples out of it. Oh, you're right. It does look like there might be something down in there. Hang on. I do have something small with me. Oh, yes. There's a teeny tiny. Aha. There's a staple that's stuck in the middle of it. You're right. Okay. I'll try it again. Hang on just a second. All right. Yeah, hang on just a second. It fixed it! Hooray! Thank you! All right! We are in working condition. Thanks, Mom. Listen, yeah. Okay. Right, yeah, I know. Okay, I, I gotta go. I'll call you back in just a few minutes, okay? All right, thanks. Bye. Well, what do you know? It worked! Now, why in the world would I bother to keep you on the line while I'm talking to someone trying to fix a stapler. 
because sometimes things are difficult to fix. Sometimes they're simple, and sometimes they take a little bit of extra work. Sometimes we have to get other people to help us fix things. Now, what does this have to do with friendships and relationships? Well, Jesus gave us sort of some advice and some important steps to take if we're having a problem with someone. See, Jesus knew that relationships were very important. He valued people, and he knew that we need to value relationships that we have with one another as well. And if something is going wrong that hurts our friendship with someone, well, that really can hurt the church and it can hurt God because it's harder for us to function if we're having difficult conflicts. So Jesus said, if you're having a problem with someone, the first thing you need to do is talk it out with them. Ask them. Don't go and smack them. Don't just ignore them. Don't just toss them aside. But if something comes up, you ask them, what seems to be the problem? What's up? Can I help you? Can we resolve this? And Jesus said, if that doesn't get it fixed, if that doesn't take care of the problem, well, then you need to go and get a couple other people involved. Sometimes that's necessary. Sometimes we might have relationship problems and we need to bring other people into it for extra opinions or so that we don't get too heated up and upset. So Jesus said, bring other people into it and have them talk it out and witness you trying to resolve this. Well, and if that still doesn't work, then you go to the church and you bring this issue with someone to the church. And maybe a pastor or someone that's a leader or maybe even multiple people in the congregation can help you to work it out. And Jesus wanted us to work hard to keep those relationships, to fix them, to resolve the issue. Sometimes it can be as simple as something small that someone has stuck in their head or stuck in their heart, maybe a grudge or an issue that they just can't get rid of. And sometimes taking it to a pastor can help that. And we should pray. We should take it to God as well. Because Jesus knew that it's important for us to have those friendships, that those friendships can bind things together and keep them together, and that we want to keep our relationships together. We want to do everything we can to resolve difficult issues, not just to give up at the first sign of a problem or an argument, but to get it taken care of. So if you have a friend and you're having a problem of some sort, try and work it out. It might mean something as simple as saying, hey, I'm not sure if you understood what I said, but maybe you took it the wrong way and I'm sorry you're upset. Sometimes we can apologize. Or maybe it's more involved. Maybe we need to ask a teacher or a parent or another friend or even a pastor to help us work it out. But friendships are important things and we want to try to resolve those conflicts that we have with one another whatever they might be, big or small, complicated or simple. Even with pets, sometimes we have conflicts. And so Jesus wants to make sure that we know that those relationships are important because Jesus said, if there are two or more people that gather together, I will be with them. That means God is with us wherever we are. Even if we're by ourselves, God is with us. But when we're with another friend or two or three, well, that can make amazing things happen for God and for his kingdom. And we don't want to lose that possibility by losing a friendship or a relationship. We want to work really hard to keep those things together. Sometimes we have to be a little humble or say sorry or work hard at thinking about the other person's feelings, but it's important to resolve that issue, whatever it takes. Ask someone for advice, ask your friend for advice, but keep those friendships together because they are so important and wonderful and God-honoring. And they remind us of our relationship with the best friend, Jesus. So why don't we say a prayer and we can thank God for that and ask him to help us when we're having problems in relationships. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for his lessons and his teachings. Help us to resolve conflicts, to keep our friendships, and to fix our relationships with one another so they can honor you and serve you. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. And from Fiona and I, we hope you have a great week. Like, comment, subscribe. Feel free to let us know what you're interested in seeing. And hopefully we will see you next time, right?
Make disciples. Go make disciples and have a wonderful week. Our prayer of illumination. Your word, O oh God, is always spoken as mortal words into a fleeting moment. As we hear these words of scripture, help us to catch the eternal words behind them. Let that word shape us and shape our future, not to be like the past, but to be like you, O oh God. We listen now to these words of Holy Scripture. Romans 13, 8 to 14. No, owe no one anything but love. No one debt remains outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves an others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And whatever other commands there may be, are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does not harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. The day is near. And do this, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because of our salvation is near, nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carious and dark drunkenness, not as sexual immortality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to uh, garify the desires of the flesh. Matthew 18, 15 to 20, where two or three are gathering in my name. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault, just be between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to even listen to even the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whether you bind, to the, bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they, they ask for, it will be done for them by, the Father in he, by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. May the same Spirit who inspired these words of Holy Scripture interpret them to our understanding. You know, one of the things that I like best about the New Testament is that it is so practical. It must have been the fact that Jesus had human beings called disciples always with him that forced him to speak in everyday terms about everyday problems. Sometimes Christians disagree. Sometimes they hold grudges. Sometimes they quarrel. Sometimes they hold things against each other. Scripture for today says that we must never tolerate any situation in which there is a breach of personal relationship between us and another member of the Christian community. In this 18th chapter of Matthew, Jesus admits that disciples are going to have conflicts, but they need to resolve them. It's very true today that the behavior of us church members on this very issue makes Christianity to the outside world either be repulsive or attractive. It isn't a matter that Christians are perfect and will not have conflicts. 
there will always be quarrels. There will always be differences of opinion on how and who and disappointments with preachers and councils or leadership. There's always going to be things like hurt feelings or bent pride, loss of faith, face and lots of mistakes. It's the idea that Christians can resolve these conflicts as no other fellowship, as no other fellowship can, that Jesus puts before us today. Comus, a Duke of Florence, had a saying that indicated the limitations of his religion. You shall read that we are commanded to forgive our enemies, but you never read that we are commanded to forgive our friends. That can happen in the Christian proclamation of the gospel. We spend a lot of time in our pulpits talking about how Christians are commanded by Jesus to love their enemies and to pray for their enemies. When in actuality, right here in the pre pew side by side are Christians who hold grudges or hang on to petty hurts or refuse to forgive and love each other. And when they do this, church and Christianity and the whole practice of religion for them is not the joyful experience that it really ought to be. They miss a large dimension of belonging to Christ's family. This particular portion of Matthew gives us a whole scheme of action for the mending of broken relationships. Within our family of God, called the Christian Fellowship, Jesus advises, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. So the first rule Jesus gives us is that if anyone has wronged us, we should immediately put our complaint into words. One of the biggest mistakes we can make is not to voice our hurt or just brood about it can be fatal. fatal. That can poison our whole life until we can't think of anything else but our own hurt. Our own personal injury becomes the whole center of our life. A lot of times just voicing such a hurt can help place things into perspective. And Jesus knew that and he said, go and tell him. Many times just putting our disgruntlement into words will help us put it into its proper perspective. It may even seem trivial and a, a lot less important when you do this. There are so many times when we must not suffer our hurt in a sort of brooding silence. That's the worst thing that we can do. So the first rule that Jesus gives us to resolve conflict is tell it, speak it, get it out into the open. Second, we are advised to see the person in person. Jesus says, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. And then he adds the beautiful thought that if he listens to you, you have gained your brother. And if we have a difference with someone, Jesus says to settle it face to face. It seems to me that Jesus is warning against things like writing letters or complaining to someone else and all such things like that. To write a letter or email can bring on more misunderstanding while Christians can deal with each other face to face. Being aware of our own shortcomings and still having God's forgiveness we can deal with each other in a compassionate way, allowing forgiveness, knowing we also make mistakes from time to time, and we can allow others the same privilege. 
Emory Parks tells a story. When the books of a certain Scotch doctor were examined after his death, it was found that a number of accounts were crossed out with a note, forgiven, too poor to pay. But the physician's wife decided that these accounts must be paid and proceeded to sue for the money. The judge asked just one question. Is this your husband's handwriting? When she replied that it was, he said, then there is no tribunal in the land that can obtain this money when he has written the word forgiven. Jesus says, go personally. A letter can be misread and misunderstood, and it can convey a tone which it never meant to convey. Jesus adds this, if he listens to you, you have gained your brother. That's a beautiful picture, and we make the effort. <laughs> Let me just back up a bit. That's a beautiful picture. We can make the effort and take that first step going in Christian love. Our purpose is not to hum humiliate or condemn the other. The first je step Jesus advised is to tell them. The second is to go personally. And then there's the third step. The third step is to take some wise Christian with you, he puts it. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. But in this case, you don't take others along to prove wrongdoing, but rather to help in reconciliation. It may well be that we are the ones and not the other person who are in wrong. Hate often develops against those whom we have wronged or who have wronged us. It sometimes is so that we just can't say or do the right thing to resolve the conflict ourselves. There are always those few saints in the world who can work reconciliation. Jesus called them peacemakers. If we take things over or talk things over with a wise person, that person can often help us see ourselves as others see us. The rabbis had a wise saying, judge not alone, for none may judge alone, save one and that is God. The third step is to ask for help. The fourth step, according to Jesus, is if all that, if all that fails, we must take our personal troubles to the Christian fellowship, to the church. But what Jesus means here is this. It is in an atmosphere of Christian prayer, of Christian love and Christian fellowship that personal relationships may be righted. It is clear that Jesus makes a big assumption here that our fellowship is Christian and that because of that we judge everyone not on legalism but in the light of love. He puts it, if he refuses to listen to them tell it to the church. So that's the fourth step, tell it to the church. The fifth follows right after. If he refuses to listen, even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Wow, that's big stuff. The first impression here is to give up and treat the person as hopeless and abandon him or her as irreclaimable. However, Jesus never sets limits to human forgiveness. Remember what he told Peter? We must forgive 70 times 7. 
It may be that Jesus was saying something like, when you have done all of this, when you have given the sinner every chance, and when he remains stubborn, you may think he is no better than a tax collector and a Gentile. Well, you might be right, but I have not found tax collectors and Gentiles hopeless. Even if the person is like the tax collector and Gentile, you can still win them over. So this scripture does not say to give up. In fact, it challenges us to win the heart, even the hardest heart. It tells us that Jesus finds no person whole, and neither was me, must we. So sure, we do have conflicts within the discipleship, our congregation, the church. Sure, it will be tough resolving them. But Jesus tells us ways we can do it. We should do it, and we must do it. If ours is a Christian fellowship, and we are Christian. So number one, put your complaint into words. Number two, see him or her in person. Number three, counsel with others why, with other wise Christians. Number four, make sure of the Christian fellowship. And five, never give up the try. Amen. Our response, God offers us good news. We respond to God with our thanksgiving that comes through our offerings, which are presented through music, prayer, and monetarily as we can. Bless and use all that we have to offer for your purpose of restoring wholeness to a broken world. 
Loving God, we present the gift of our very selves, excited to share with those around us and greet you on our way. May our prayers speak to the world of your love. Gracious God, from, who from the beginning of time has called all people to step out in faith and who has challenged people to see beyond what is right before them, we come before you this day to pray for all your people, whether they be needing a hug, a kind word, or a simple smile. You call us to love. Today we recognize this is your law to discipleship of care, compassion, and fulfilling love. God, give us the compassion to see ourselves in each other. Give us the strength to care for each other. You give us your guidance, and you give us your prophets. And you ask us to answer your call. Today we remember we ask also for your blessing upon those that we name out loud now and those that we hold silently in our hearts. We lift now these names, prayers, and concerns. God, we ask for strength and courage for all those that offer their care to anyone in need. The caregivers of those that are sick as well as ourselves. We pray for our world caught in pandemic and we pray for a vaccine for COVID-19. We pray for the people caught in the crossfire of unrest or protest or difficult finances and disaster. We pray for those who are facing life transitions, for those that are celebrating and for those that are grieving. We pray for all folks who are feeling the pain of the loss of a loved one. We pray that comfort and healing and, and warmth may surround them and uplift them. We give you thanks, O oh God, for our church, our church communities. Grant that we, your church, grow in laughter and in love, in wisdom and in faithfulness. Inspire us to be bearers of your grace to all who cry out to you in need. We ask this in the name of Christ.
And now, my friends, we have worshiped. We have joined ourselves in praise of God, Creator, Christ, and Spirit. And let us depart now, blessed and challenged to live by the Spirit. May your love of God and your love of neighbor show in all that you are and all that you do. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Mm -hmm.